Join Dr. Eckel in this fun and sometimes disturbing exploration and what it means for you. Now, here's your host, Dr. Eckel. All right. Welcome back, everybody. I've got my guest, Wendy Myers, on the show today. What the health? And here we are. Uh, we're talking. She's got MyersDetox.com. She is a heavy metals detox expert and functional diagnostic nutritionist out of the L.A. area, but seeing people worldwide. Uh, she's the number one best-selling author of Limitless Energy. Uh, how to Detox Toxic Metals to End Exhaustion and Chronic Fatigue. And that is the title of our discussion today around Can Your Fatigue Be Caused by Heavy Metals? So welcome on, Wendy. Thanks so much for having me. You are welcome. I, um, you know, you are a heavy metals detox expert and you've developed all kinds of um, programming around that. I'm really excited to talk about that. This is um, a hidden cause of fatigue, right? Fatigue is being one of those number one reasons why people seek out their providers and go in for care. Um, and I'm wondering, number one, how how did you get into the healthcare in general, um, and then specifically into this niche? Well, you know, I'm like a lot of people, a lot of practitioners. I, you know, had my own health issues and was doing everything right with my health: diet, supplements, exercise, sleeping, reducing stress, just doing everything right, and I felt like crap. And so I went to my doctor because I was fatigued and brain fogged and having trouble losing weight and having some mood issues and doc figure out what's wrong with me. I did about $4,000 worth of mm. functional medical tests. And they found out that I had, you know, the hormone levels of a menopausal woman. I had low thyroid function and a lot of nutrient deficiencies and adrenal fatigue. And I thought, how do I have all these health issues when I'm 37 and I'm the picture of health, you know, or so yeah. I thought, and she wanted to do the hormone replacement therapy, thyroid, you know, hormones for life and all that stuff. And she was a functional medical doctor and very good doctor. But I just thought, you know, that's not, and you know, that's not really what I envisioned my life at as 30, 37 to go on hormone replacement therapy. You know, what caused low stress, sex, and thyroid hormones? And then how, what can I do to address that? And so I went on Dr. Google and was searching for, you know, causes of adrenal fatigue. And I just happened upon a website a really random site that was talking about heavy metals mm. and chemicals as a cause of adrenal fatigue and low stress and sex hormones and thyroid hormones and how to detox them. And that started with a hair mineral analysis. And I was very skeptical at first, but um, I tried it and I started doing a little program around the hair mineral analysis and I started feeling a lot better uh, fairly quickly. And, but I've just kind of over, over the years for, for me, that just a light bulb went off for me. Toxins are the cause of so many issues. And I just wondered why I had never really uh, touched on this before or read about it very much because mm. I was a, you know, a big reader my whole life, all about health. And so I just dove into it and just started my site, myersdetox.com to publish what I was learning. That's awesome. So the hero's journey indeed for you. So you, um, I, I mean, how, how prevalent are metals right now in, in North America, let's say? Well, you know, heavy metals and chemicals are very present in our environment. We get them in air, food, and water. So even if you're eating organic food, that means chemical-free. It doesn't mean metal-free. So you can still get lead and cadmium and nickel and mercury in organic food. Um, you, uh, when you breathe, you're breathing in aluminum, mercury, other metals, and we get a lot of metals in our water. I just published an article this morning on uranium toxicity and how chemical fertilizers leach uranium from rocks and it gets into our water. And a lot of people are drinking water with uranium or showering in water with uranium and that causes diabetes and blood sugar control issues, just mm. to, as an example. So uh, we're just getting this uh, everywhere. We're slathering our body in personal care products that have uh, chemicals and metals in them. So it's just everywhere around us. And it's really kind of depressing when you kind of dig into it, when you 
learn more about this and I'm kind of a Debbie Downer about, you know, with all this stuff uh, what I'm talking about, but there's a lot that you can do. You just need to have awareness about this and, and also insight that this can be a huge clue, a huge missing part of that puzzle in, uh, you know, meeting your health goals or reducing symptoms that are bothersome for you that you're not able to discover and alleviate with going to a conventional or even a functional medical doctor who's not looking at toxins as underlying root causes of your symptoms. Got it. Yeah, it can be. Once you start looking under the hood on this, it's like, oh, we are swimming in this stuff out here. <laughs> um, but you're right. There is a lot that we can do about it. Um, you know, it, it's a big component for me, you know, when I talk about the brain health and uh, overlooked assessments for um brain health. This is a big one. And I know you and I have had some conversations on it. That's why I wanted to get you on the show and share um, your knowledge and information with the what the health listeners. Um, so what, um, you know, why is everyone so tired? Are you finding particular burden for certain metals or is it a, a total, a total metal burden? Well, everyone has certain metals, so it's impossible to not have aluminum and lead. And I think most people have mercury and most people have cadmium. Nickel is a distant second. And so these are just metals that are in our environment. You know, we use leaded gasoline for a long time and that's still in our soils. Uh, you know, the lead got into the atmosphere from, you know, you know fuel burning and car exhaust. It's settled into our soils. There's leaded paint and it's estimated up to 50% or more of homes that mm. just gets into, the, into lead dust and we wow. inhale it. And, you know, so if your home was built before 1978, you probably have lead paint in, in your walls somewhere that's cracking and peeling and creating dust. It's a huge problem that a lot of people don't look at. And it's a big cause of fatigue and brain fog and other issues, uh, high blood pressure as well. And, um, and then um, mercury, I mean, mercury fillings, who hasn't had a mercury filling? Yes. And uh, fish, who hasn't eaten fish? And it's also from all the coal burning industry where that's releasing a lot of mercury and cadmium into the air. Wherever you have mercury and large migratory fish and shellfish, you also have cadmium because that's also in coal. And cadmium mm. causes more cancers than all of the other heavy metals combined. And so that's a, it's why smokers get cancer. It's why my father died of esophageal cancer was <laughs> from smoking cigarettes. And, uh, but people smoke a lot of marijuana, even though it has a lot of medicinal benefits, cadmium uh, can be uh, a big problem for them as well. Um, so just these uh, aluminum, you know, aluminum is neurophilic. It's definitely a con contributor to brain fog, to Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia and uh, nerve issues, numbness and tingling, and can cause so many different issues. And uh, aluminum is in every breath that we take um, outside. It's just, it's very present in our environment. And it's, you know, every time you drink from an aluminum can or use aluminum mm. foil for, for cooking or uh, go to a restaurant, they use cheap aluminum cookware and silverware. And it's just, it's in a lot of different places that uh, we ingest it in our bodies. And so no one is exempt from this. Everyone has heavy metals and chemicals in their body. The, the World Health Organization said that we have about 500 to 700 chemicals on average for each person in their body. Mm. And, you know, obviously these are not contributing to health. They're, uh, they impede every different organ system, your pancreatic function, liver function, brain function, nervous system function, uh, you name it, there's a heavy metal or chemical undermining the function of any conceivable uh, you know, organ system in the body. Jeez. So, you know, when you hear that, I mean, I'm hoping the folks out there in viewer land do not put your head in the sand. This is really important information because, yeah, you know, yeah, it yeah. can get a little overwhelming yeah. with hearing that, like, gosh, they're just everywhere and ubiquitous at that. Um, what, how do, how do the metals reduce the body's ability to make energy and just, you know, we're all exposed to them. So why are some people showing symptoms? You know, like when I learned about it in environmental medicine in 1998, it was like, everybody's got these. Is it causing you your health problem? 
And then at a certain level, you got to optimize. So, you you know, you want to get the proverbial let out, right? Yes. Not let Zeppelin, but getting the let out. So just to optimize the health. So how do you how do you think about them in kind of a continuum or I mean, this is baseline stuff of underlying root causes, right? Yes. Yeah. So the reason that some people are affected and others aren't is there's a couple different factors at play. So everyone's exposed, um, but over time, people build these up decade after decade and eventually they can reach a tipping point or they have a lot of stress in their lives or they have a, a number of toxins or just some sort of event that is the straw that broke the camel's back. Well, well they will start having symptoms where they didn't before. And then some people have different abilities personally, genetically to detox these metals. Mm -hmm. And so, and that can be differ for every single metal within a person's body. So, you know, so typically people that are, you know, sickly as a child, they were born sickly and they've just been kind of not well their whole lives struggling. These people tend to have issues with detoxing metals or something going on blocking one or more detox pathways where they just can't get this stuff out. People can also have sensitivities to metals, just like they can have sensitivities to gluten or a blueberry or, or whatnot. And if you have a sensitivity, it will make you more ill than someone who doesn't have that mm. sensitivity. And, but and one critical point, and this is something I really try to communicate to people is that there are certain metals that interfere in your body's ability to make energy. And energy is that currency you have to have to heal, to, um, you know, to repair your body, to sleep, you know, uh, sleep's a very energy intensive process to digest your food. Energy is the name of the game. And so many people in our, our culture, our modern fast paced society are tired because of metals like mm -hmm. arsenic, aluminum, tin, thallium, and cesium. And these are metals that poison enzymes that transport nutrients into your mitochondria, which is your, your little cells powerhouses that make your energy or ATP. And so when people have one or more of these metals, um, over time, they're going to get more and more and more tired that drives them to the doctor. Mm. The doctor says they have low thyroid function and you know, they, they get on thyroid medication, which is you know one of the top medications prescribed. And... Um, and then they just uh, kind of just start having this domino effect of other symptoms that they'll add on top of the fatigue because their body just can't work properly. Mm. But these metals are big culprits in why people are tired. Uh -huh. And you named a few that you're seeing on a bigger trend. So what's, how do you assess, like what's, how can you best assess your levels? Well, I like to start people with a hair mineral analysis. It's also called an HTMA, but it's a screening tool. It's not, you know, it's where I start with people, but it can give you a lot of information. Um, there's no perfect heavy metals test. Um, what I work with people, I do a hair mineral analysis. I like to do a urine, uh, urine metals test and a stool metals test as well. And that'll mm. give me the best picture of what's going on with them, of their body burden, because some metals come out in the hair and we'll only see certain metals in the hair. Some only come out in the urine and some only come out in the stool. And oh. so, yeah, so it's, it's just one of those things where there's just no perfect metal test. There's no one test that's going to tell you every metal that you have in your body. After your screening, then do you do like a challenge test or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. So we do a hair mineral analysis. The urine is a challenge test. And then uh, the stool is not a challenge test. Got it. And they're all specific for um, on the metal burden and yes. uh, detoxification pathways as well, or? Yeah, we're not testing detoxification pathways. I mean, uh, what I work with some clients, we do do genetics for them to look at that a little bit more closely, but we don't offer that by itself. That's just with a, a handful of clients. Got it. And then you triangulate the, the results between the hair and the urine and the stool. Yeah, exactly. To so we pinpoint can, for them. Yeah, people can just do a hair mineral analysis. They can do a, a great detox program just based on a hair mineral analysis. But sometimes if people are very, very ill, I do encourage them to do all three tests so Got we can it. see exactly what we're working with and really do a sniper approach to supplementation as opposed to a shotgun approach. We're just kind of 
what a lot of people do, they just kind of throw a lot of things out their health and hope something works. Right. <laughs> so you want to really get more. And, and the, the hair test also looks at minerals, which I think are not that sexy. People overlook them and they're really foundational for, for anyone looking to improve their health. You have to focus on minerals first. Yeah. With your supplements. And so we look at that also. That's awesome. Are you finding, are there certain people that can't excrete certain metals in their hair? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a factor when you're looking at a hair test is some people genetically don't deposit metals into the hair and they won't show metals. And, um, and that's why it also can be helpful if you have a few hair tests and there's no metals coming out, then yeah, you want to do a urine or stool test. That doesn't happen very often, but it does happen more often than not when people do a hair mineral analysis. Um, if they're very ill, they just don't have energy to detox. Mm. They don't have the energy or resources to push toxins out. So we don't see anything. And, um, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Right. We know, we know that they're there. Um, but when people start kind of doing a detox program, taking minerals and infrared sauna and things like that, the, the metals start coming out. Do you notice, um, you know, I guess a couple, a couple different questions come up around that, but, um, let me start with, we'll stay on topic cause I can go all over the place <laughs> with that one. Um, <laughs> So with these metals come in, so we talked about best assessment and then they come in and they uh, affect the mitochondria. So do you have a, you know, I guess you, you had mentioned it there, like some people just can't handle it. So you've got different criteriums for like robust individual to very frail and a, and a way in the Myers detox program on kind of a, I call it the slow boat and the fast boat of detoxification for metals. So I'm guessing that's what you're, you're talking about there. Yeah. Yeah. People are assessed on an individual basis. If they get a consult yeah. uh, to work with a practitioner, we have a team of practitioners, Great. Um, then people will be guided individually. Everyone has very different kind of health issues and needs and abilities. And uh, some people can't take supplements and yeah. we do, we have programs for those people as well. And um, so just, we have something for everyone. There's, I've just worked with thousands of people personally and have, uh, just found a way to work with every single person regardless of their, their health status or detoxability. Awesome. And with, um, do you get a full body burden or I guess with the protocols and do you retest to see, or are you yeah. going mainly symptomatic on the folks? Well, it just depends. I mean, we can look at symptoms. We can look at, we have a full intake question we're looking at. Um, clues as to exposures and things like that. Places there are certain toxic areas of the country, uh, and just different clues. We know that people can have exposures, mm. and we look at symptoms, and we look at testing, and and look at uh, health conditions, diagnoses, and whatnot. Sure. Um, but certainly, an initial test won't always have that many metals. But as people start doing a detox program, getting the nutrients they need to push out metals and remove them and escort them out of the body we'll see more and more metals coming out on subsequent tests. Great. Oh, got it. So yeah, you've kind of opened the pathway up and out. Exactly. Do, um, are you finding with the trace minerals and elements like a big deficiency in the population when you're testing? Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, across the board, the majority of people are mineral deficient. And that's one, one very simple thing people can do is just take more minerals to improve your body's functioning, improve your body's detoxability, relax your nervous system, reduce stress, sleep better. Mm. Uh, it's very, very fundamental, very simple to do. But a hair test does show that uh, the majority of individuals are low in minerals, but a lot of people have absorption issues. Uh, there's a lot working against our ability to absorb nutrients. And that's another reason why people eating these amazing diets and taking all these mm. super expensive, amazing supplements aren't getting anywhere and spinning their wheels because they're not actually absorbing it. So we have a lot of techniques we use to improve absorption as well. Interesting. So what, um, the other thing that I've seen, you know, um, have you seen any link between uh, candida or lime and metals? And what absolutely. do you think's going on there? Yeah, absolutely. So the body is very innately intelligent. So when you have a candida infection, for instance, and you attempt to eradicate it, and then it comes back and you take a, do another cleanse and it comes back, the body allows certain infections to proliferate because candida is cleaning up mercury and other metals in the body. 
it mm-hmm. can eat five or six times its weight in metals and it's the body is using it as kind of a cleanup crew mm-hmm. and so yeah addressing chronic infections like that especially like lyme a uh, part of that in our medical director of our program um he feels like you have to bring metal levels down before you can even begin to hope to address lyme successfully mm. um, because metals interfere in immune system functioning in a lot of different ways, you know, arsenic, lead, mercury, and cadmium interfere in the macrophages and neutrophils and slow them down. They don't, the immune system doesn't respond as well. And that's why Lyme successfully hides. That's why a, one of the reasons why a lot of infections are, are on the rise, chronic infections, Lyme, Lyme-like co-infections are on the rise is because the immune system just can't respond properly. Got it. It's almost like the metals put up a force field around them. And so then our own innate intelligence doesn't recognize it there. Um, In Chinese medicine, that's called goo syndrome, right? And I remember when I first started into medicine, I was watching all of these women. It was like 96, 1996. And they all were like the 80s must have been the decade for candida awareness, right? I mean, it's still there, but it started in the 80s. And these women would come into clinic and say, gosh, doc, I can't even look at a piece of toast or I get a yeast infection. And lo and behold, we started testing them for metals. And wow, that was really what was underlying that whole situation for them. Oh, yeah. So, I read I read the yeast syndrome. I was taking the Milstat and doing yeah. that too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, cause it's, you know, it's like hits all of the symptom picture for so many people and you think, oh, it's gotta be yeast. And I still see patients today, they link all of their symptoms up to yeast. And it's like, I got to kill these bugs and we got to get these bugs out. And then we test them and it's like, well, it's a functional dysbiosis, but really, you know, underlying that what's allowing these things to flourish here. And I really like how you kind of frame that with the body has the ability to heal. We just have to remove those obstacles to cure. So totally aligned on that. And this is such a under, um, underappreciated and overlooked area in that I love that you've put it. It's just foundational for you. I'm wondering, um, so can you outline your mitochondrial detox uh, system that yes. you use for us? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because, you know, the main complaint for most of my clients, you know, coming to, you know, seeking my help or my own personal main complaint was lack of energy. Yeah. And so I put a lot of research into metals that cause fatigue and how to remove them. And so I created a simple two-step system that uh, people can start doing without having to do testing or see a, a you know a, a practitioner and do all this stuff and get started removing these metals. And so what I've developed is uh, one product. It's called Ageless AF, and it essentially has a form of <laughs> silica in it that binds on to the metals that cause fatigue. It's specifically kind of chemically formulated to grab onto those and mobilize them out of your cells and it will get the arsenic, aluminum, tin, thallium, and cesium. That Ooh. almost every client I test has thallium and cesium. Cesium is from like Fukushima fallout, nuclear testing, and just this stuff has gotten into our environment. And thallium is from, you know, naturally occurring in petroleum products. So uh, mm-hmm. it just gets into our, the air. We breathe it in from car exhaust and smog and industrial pollution. And so the silica, the special form will grab onto it. And then there's, uh, this is what it looks like right here, this ageless AF. Ah. And then, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a funny name, it's good. but it's, it's true. You need energy to, you know, stop aging. And then uh, the next thing you have to have, once you're kind of pulling all these toxins out of your tissues, you don't want those traveling around and redistributing somewhere else. That's, you know, detox mistake number one so you have to have a binder something to like mm. latch onto that stuff absorb it like a sponge and escort it out of the body and you urinate it out so i have a, a citrus pectin product called citra cleanse and this also has cilantro extract and fulvic humic acid which mm. are amazing detoxifiers themselves but the most important thing in here is the the binder that will bind onto toxins and absorb all kinds of things uh chemicals and other heavy metals as well and lots of research uh, behind citrus pectin. And so those two kind of give you like that one, two punch 
to start removing all this stuff that's our, you know, big roadblocks in your body's functioning, including energy production. You know, it does, that's great. I love that ageless AF. Um, <laughs> And so it is, I mean, you know, as you mentioned at the start of the show, we are swimming in this solution out here. And so having products that help on a day in, day out, kind of keep the, keep it the bucket empty, so to speak, and make sure we're getting these things out is so important. So thank you for sharing that. Do you have some stories of folks that you've helped with the program? Yes. Yeah, I do. I have clients that were uh, bedridden actually with chronic fatigue 18 wow. months later, they're back to work. I've had clients that uh, had fertility issues that uh, got pregnant. I had one client that was a nurse. Uh, she had tried for a couple of years, different things, trying to get pregnant. And um, after a couple of years working with her, she became pregnant. Nice. And, uh, she's great. I still see her on social media. And um, clients that are just a lot of different clients from that are suffer from fatigue that just dramatically impacts their life that are, you know, they're, you know, they're, cause your brain isn't working as well. You know, your brain uses 20% of your energy. And yeah. so I have one client was very, very severely brain fogged, um, really had trouble just engaging on our appointments hmm. and, um, had been to like 20 different doctors. She was very pessimistic that I was going to be able to help her. And within six months, she's like, oh my God, I, she's feeling so much better. She's considering going back to work as an herbalist. Uh, wow. She was an herbalist before, and she just wasn't able to kind of crack the code to getting her health back. And so she's really happy. So just a lot of great stories like that. I've worked a lot of celebrities. I've worked person with Dr. Marcola mm. and pinpointing his, that's kind of like the last thing he had never really done was work on his toxins. And so I worked with him personally for three months. I worked with Donna Gates, Ben Greenfield, and a number of other folks to, you know, help them uh, detox. Awesome. Yeah. And what do you have? Um, what's your favorite, most effective detox protocol? Yeah. So um, I love infrared saunas. I think those are just a really pleasurable, effective way to, you know, boost your immunity to, you know, really activates about 90 different heat shock proteins and induces like this faux fever that kills off pathogens, which helps to clear your detox pathways mm. and things stuffing up your liver and, and function to impede detox. And, um, and also just sweating out, you sweat all these metals and chemicals. And so that is a you know, really, really important part of anyone uh, that's trying to detox and improve their longevity as well. How long, what kind of protocols do you recommend for that? Because there, there's, those are all over the board, right? On, you know, how hot, how long, how frequent, yeah. you know, along those lines. Yeah, I kind of feel like you can't screw it up. I think people <laughs> get like, you know, they Too get overboard. really, yeah, they were like, well, the, the, this, that, and you know, they have the right frequency in the spectrum and how long, yeah. you know, you can't screw it up. Just get into a sauna and you're good, but you need to get into a far infrared sauna or a near infrared light bulb sauna. Um, just a, a typical Swedish or Finnish sauna. Most people can't stay in those very long. They're too hot and oh. they don't, uh, they're not as effective. They don't have produce as many toxins in the sweat as a far or near infrared. So as long as you're doing it, you might as well get the most out of it. But sure. the, there's lots of research on the regular saunas, super, super helpful. So if you have one at your gym, get in it after you work out or yeah. whatnot, get into it. It's really helpful, but you just get more bang for your buck if you're doing a, a far or near infrared sauna. Got it. Yeah. What else is in there in the protocol? Well, oh, the protocol. Yeah. So uh, everyone's favorites, uh, coffee enemas and liver cleansing, Yeah. Uh, liver flushes, a lot of people's livers not working so hot. We have a hundred million people. It's estimated with fatty liver disease. Yeah. Anyone with a metabolic syndrome, which is in the U S 25 to 30% of the population, you have a fatty liver. If you have diabetes or diabetes, um, you know, high cholesterol, uh, high liver enzymes, you have a fatty liver. And so, uh, doing coffee enemas, doing liver flushes, can be really, really helpful to addressing that and reversing it. Interesting. Yeah. Have you um, have you seen or uh, heard of anything around alpha lipoic acid uh, for the fatty liver disease IV with vitamin E? 
Um, I haven't heard any, any of that specifically. There's a lot of really amazing cutting edge protocols out there. Yeah. So I haven't heard of that one. A lot of people don't have access to IV. I do right. IV, you know, various IV protocols, vitamin C and glutathione. But for, for most people, I do recommend a fat soluble lipoic acid. Yeah. So it's not your typical water soluble alpha lipoic acid, but I like that the fat soluble, which is, um, the product I recommend is this, it's life extension, uh, super lipoic acid. And cool. that's about two to three times or more effective than just a regular alpha lipoic acid. But yeah, that improves liver function. And it's one product I use to, to help people detox. It's real effective for arsenic, uh, toxicity and other metals as well. And Got mercury. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, you're right. That is, that's a silent epidemic right there is fatty liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So, and based off of the metabolic syndrome, um, what else? Uh, so do you add, is there some movement therapies in this detox or your favorite detox protocol? Or, you know, how do you see most people do or fare on this? People feel fair amazing. I mean, it is, you know, it is work. I mean, it is, yeah. you know, it takes a lot of participation on someone's part. They have to be very motivated. They yeah. have to be very into detox. <laughs> and, uh, and what I encourage people to really think about is, you know, not doing a detox program for a couple of months, but thinking more of it as, you know, doing or engaging in my Myers detox protocol to learn what they need to learn to add detox to their lifestyle. Mm. So it's not just something they're doing on a, you know, two or three months or whatnot. They're adding these things permanently to what they're already doing. And I think that's the, the, the real key and the kind of the changing of someone's kind of mentality is, you know, we're exposed to these toxins every day. It's going to continue. This is not something you just do, you know, periodically, you need to do something every day to uh, try to think about removing these toxins from your body, but, and more importantly, facilitate your body's ability to remove them on its own. So improving liver function, um, you know, and just doing all these things that I, I've been talking about, taking supplements, doing infrared saunas, doing various things to, to improve your body's functioning overall. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Um, I think we're going to, we've got a link. I think we're going to put a link in for your detox checklist and your favorite detox tips. So that'll be in the show notes here. Um, and what, so you've worked, I mean, you've worked with all kinds of people all over the globe. You have a whole team of, um, support for the Myers detox, right? So they get, people get signed up with a health coach to go through this. Yes. yes. Cool. And you've trained them in the Wendy Myers detox protocol. Oh yeah. I personally trained them for a year. Yeah. Uh, everyone that works uh, with us and we have a, other types of practitioners as well. We have a few different types of programs. So really something for everyone. Um, we have a whole line of detox supplements and we have a, like a liver rehab cleanse people that just kind of want to start there. Yeah. yeah. There's really something for everyone as far as somebody wants to go with it. Um, we also have the detox Institute for practitioners opening up, um, end of the year to oh. train medical doctors and other practitioners looking for the evidence based basis for detoxification. Sure. Uh, Cause you know, a lot of people are, you know, want to see the proof. And, uh, there's a lot of doctors that just think, you know, you don't detox as BS. You don't need to detox because your liver yeah. does that. But if 30% of the population we know has non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, how exactly is a liver detoxing your body? Wow. Right. That, that's a well. huge number, right? Um, and I'm thinking that that filter, I, you know, I like to give the analogy just in simpleton terms of like any other filter in your life, what do you have to do with it? Right. Yeah. Um, Geez. So to go from here, I think what, what I want to talk about then as well. So that's on, I mean, so major root of bringing people into a provider's office is fatigue and so many practitioners are not looking at metals. Um, so what, uh, if you don't, so you're saying the body can just detox them. Is there a route that a certain metal comes out via sweat or do they all come out via the sweat? 
Um, it just depends. So when you do something like an infrared sauna and you're sweating, you do have productive sweat where toxins are coming out, but you also just, you're facilitating the, you're creating like a stress state where toxins exit the cells. So they'll also exit the urine and the stool as mm. well when you're doing an infrared sauna or when you're doing like a foot bath. Um, you know, you're not just, you're not really getting toxins in the water of a foot bath. They're eliminating it over the two or three days after that foot bath through the urine or stool. And so infrared saunas have that same concept where you're the, a lot are exiting the sweat and through the skin, but there's other routes of exit also. Got it. And with, um, so the foot, the foot detox baths, those actually work? They do work. Yeah. But the toxins aren't going in the water like people tend to think. Because it they turns like, color and it's like, so dramatic, right? They like looking at the water, but it's really that it's, um, it's grounding your body. Yeah. And the water, you, you have like a current going through the water and that grounds your body. I have a lot of ways that I also help to ground people's body because your body isn't going to work unless it's grounded. And so when you ground the body, that in and of itself really facilitates the body working and detoxing better. And so those are kind of some things in the, my protocol that I mm. use. I have a lot of different strategies to do that. Um, but, but yeah, that's basically how the foot bath works. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, that's really cool. Do you do anything with like dry skin brushing or castor oil packs or anything like that or not so much? Yes, I do. Actually, you know, I encourage people to, I don't focus on it a lot, but I do encourage uh, li dry lymph brushing, mm -hmm. you know, dry brushing. You know, I do that when I get in my sauna. I do castor oil packs, but I put like an infrared, um, like this tourmaline crystal infrared pack over my castor oil pack. So it improves the improves you know circulation the, and the detox the absorption of the, yeah. yeah the absorption of the castor oil pack cool and so yeah lots of little things like that we we touch on at myers detox awesome <laughs> yeah i will i will imagine that's why i was bringing it up um yeah. on um how about baths or like soaking in baths with salts do you have any any tips around that you know what uh, not really i mean the epsom salt baths are great that's magnesium sulfate and you're getting a lot of sulfur, which is really helpful for detoxification. And every little bit counts. I tend to like, like to use stronger things that, uh, you know, because those things are helpful, but people today need things that are more helpful, that are more, that are stronger to detox their body. Mm -hmm. and, but every little bit helps. Anything you can, you're doing towards facilitating detoxification, I applaud it. But I try to communicate strategies that are the most effective yeah. for people. So I don't talk a ton about baths, but I like them myself. I take them, but you know, you need more than that to get the job totally. done. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Well, that's the the whole kind of your favorite protocol that you put together and I love it. And that's how you're supporting people around. What other programs are you offering or, you know, in that kind of functional nutritional realm that you've got um, in, in maybe bringing people's energy up? Because that's our, our topic today is around fatigue. Yes. Yeah. So are talking about as far as diets concerned? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, uh, I created a diet. It's called the, the modern paleo diet. Mm. And uh, it's centered around the foods that optimize detoxification mm. and, and doing a diet that optimizes detoxification, removing foods that we know are high in toxins and metals. And so when people uh, get my Myers detox protocol, the course or working with a practitioner, they get kind of a, the outline of the diet and a, you know, a lot of information about the specifics of that diet, but you know, it entails, you know, incorporating the top five detox foods into your mm. diet. So those are garlic, onions, broccoli sprouts, and ginger and egg yolks, Ooh. surprisingly. So those yeah. are the top detox foods. And uh, surprisingly for a lot yeah. of people, the eggs are really rich. In, the egg yolks are really rich in choline, which a lot of people are deficient in. And, uh, and also, you know, animal proteins, people mm. think of detox as doing a juice cleanse or, right. um, you know, being vegetarian or vegan, but your liver has to have certain nutrients that do not exist in the vegetarian or vegan diet to function. Mm. So it's, it, it's counterintuitive, but when I first started on my detox journey, I was vegetarian for 18 months, then vegans for six months. And so I've 
I get the whole um, attraction yeah. to, to that diet. But I learn after my health crashed, uh, being on those diets that uh, really digging more and more into nutrition, how the, what the body actually needs to function. We have to have sulfur containing amino acids and animal proteins in order to diet. That's why vegan and vegetarians still get cancers and still die of cancers because their, their detox ability is greatly compromised um, because of the, the nutrients lacking in those diets. So, but I think people still eat too much animal protein. You don't mm -hmm. really need very much. So um, I've definitely worked on reducing my animal protein, but you still need a little bit, I, I personally believe. But everyone's different. You know, that with anything, there's a bell curve. There's sure. people that thrive on tons of meat and people that do the vegan diet and they're good to go for a year. Right. years. I know them. I have, so everyone's different. I'm just speaking generally. Yeah, generally. And that, that was great. That's what I was kind of asking on. And what about, so what about all of the folks that are coming up as sulfur sensitive? Like we're hearing more and more about that. What do you, what's going on with that? Yeah, well, it's interesting because, you know, toxins can be a big contributor to that. Uh, yeah. Toxins are a huge contributor to food sensitivities of all types um, and uh, promoting histamine reactions and the cytokine storms and the, the symptoms that happen when people eat foods that uh, their body or immune system decides it doesn't like and launches a reaction to it. Um, sulfur is included in that and heavy metals and toxins are causing that. Uh, so it's not really the food sensitivity per se. It's not the sulfur per se. It's what is uh, interfering in immune system functioning that's then causing these random sensitivities to things. And so when I'm working with some of the food sensitivities, I, I have a number of approaches, but it's not just about eliminating the food because yeah. what about those people that can only eat five foods? So what I do with people is I have a bioenergetic program that yeah corrects immune system functioning. So it calms down and stops reacting to innocuous stimuli. That's just, you know, random stimuli. And so, and there's other things that we do also, but that's really the number one thing I found for immune system malfunction, because there yeah. really isn't a lot to do, uh, even in functional medicine with correcting immune system functioning. <sighs> Or when it's you're a saying, long road. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Is that like a machine or like a, a Moira, a Mora machine or along those lines or EAV or what, when you say bioelectric yes. program? So bioenergetic. So bioenergetic. What, yeah. So the one that we use, and there's a lot of amazing programs out there, um, but there's Zytoscan, which is incredible. It gives incredibly detailed information. Mm on your body's functioning that you would not be able to know otherwise. There's just, there aren't enough functional medical tests to do with the, the information, to find out the information that's yeah. in a Zytoscan. But, you know, I use a program called Nest Health and oh, yeah. people just get sent a little scanner. It looks like a little mouse. They can do this at their, in their home. We have clients all over the world. So a lot mm. of people don't have access to good medical care or functional medical care where right. they are. So we like to serve people uh, remotely anywhere in the world. And so this, this little mouse gets sent to people and they do a little biofeedback scan that uh, tests 500 different data points. Wow. And so people can see their food sensitivities. They can see their immune system functioning. They can see what EMFs specifically they're sensitive to. They can see if their circadian rhythms are off. Wow. They can see if their body is grounded or not. Um, they can see um, energetic blocks on their meridians, energetic blocks on their chakras. Um, and, and they can see the emotional traumas that they have, which is a huge underlying root cause of health issues. And so this is another kind of way that I, whatever metal detox isn't, isn't addressed, you know, what, yeah. you know, whatever detox doesn't address, we address everything else with the Nest Health Bioenergetic Program for people that uh, it resonates with. Sure. Pun intended, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
that is not the everyone's future. into that <laughs> yeah that is the future though i do believe on frequencies and sound and light healing um you know there is more and more research coming out to support that so yeah. um you're right not everybody resonates with it but ultimately they they do but they just don't know it yet <laughs> yeah i just have my ways of getting you know trying to convince people to to just try it just try yeah. it for a few months and, and just see right it cannot mm -hmm. hurt um, and it is very beneficial. So that's really cool that you're doing that assessment with folks because that's that's really thorough. What um, and that probably speeds up the whole process for them as well, as I'm guessing. Uh, yeah. How long? I mean, the body burden on some people of metals is tremendous. And I mean, have you seen like what's the average span to do a program like this to like rid the body of the metals because we're continually getting exposed to them so well like what's your thinking on that yeah so people uh, in the back in the day when i first started doing this i would tell people two to three years mm -hmm. you know but this is before using bioenergetics but people are you know the people that are sick their bodies are not working very well they have a lot of different roadblocks to to getting better um, so many different things. They hop emotional trauma, usually have absorption issues. And that's why a lot of the things they're doing don't work very well or take a really long time. And so detoxing in that, just focusing on the physical state uh, yeah. takes two to three years. It's kind of like the slow route. If someone's willing to do our Nets Health Bioenergetic program, that really speeds things up much, much, much faster. I see people's nutrient levels going up within a few uh. months very fast. Um, I see people's, um, you know, their trauma releasing and they just have less stress, which helps to absorb nutrients better. And they just feel better. They sleep better. They have more energy. The body just starts working better and uh, on many different levels. So that really speeds things up. So really it's now about a year to two years, depending on how toxic someone is. But sure. people start feeling better within 30 days, maybe, you know, 90 days. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you know, that's definitely cutting down the curve because it is, you know, you hear different practitioners talk about and what we've seen in our practice. I mean, you know, the one to two years is very, um, that's very high end, like response rate and a good program because otherwise it can take, you know, years and a lot of folks don't have that much time and they're not, you know, their health is down and they're needing it back now. So that's great that you've got a, a sped up curve, but safe and effective yes. uh, route of doing that. Um, let's see, we're coming down the tail end of the show. We got about four minutes. I wanted to bring up what your thoughts are on EMF with metals, right? Because that kind of creates a little transistor. I know that's a huge topic just to limit here at the end. And then I'll ask you at the end if there's any final things that you'd like to share with our listeners. So let's start with the EMF uh, component there first. Yeah. Yeah. EMF is a, a huge issue. It's something that people don't factor into why they're not feeling well or why they're gaining weight. Mm. And, um, you know, so say right now we have 4G, even with, even, that's a problem, <laughs> even yeah. though 5G is coming and it's just much, much, much stronger. All of these frequencies, why fry us? where all of our Wi-Fi, our cell phones, our neighbor's Wi-Fi's, even if you turn your router off at night, um, all this stuff, it causes these frequencies to emit this positive charge on our body. And our bodies are supposed to have a negative charge. So just that alone mm. causes cell dehydration, causes poor intracellular communication, causes a uh, poor glucose metabolism. That's why people are getting fat. Hmm. Um, even if they're eating a great diet because the cells can't take in the sugar. And, um, and then um, on top of that, these frequencies uh, interact with our body's energy field, which is really the main communication pathway in our body. So EMFs screw up our body's ability to communicate. And that's why we see in the research, um, again, every different you know, health issue imaginable, EMFs are contributing in some way. So I think it's really more and more important <clears throat> for people to start testing for EMF in their environment, finding sources in their environment and mitigating EMF mm. in their environment. 
really yeah. important for anyone that has mystery illness. They can't figure out what's wrong with them. Look at EMF. It's a, it's a huge cause. It causes heart palpitations, anxiety, depression, weight gain, and uh, people can be homebound uh, because of it. And some people are just much more, more sensitive than others. Um, yeah. So again, there's a spectrum. Some people are sensitive, some people aren't, you know? And so it's something you, you have to look at if you want to be healthy. And especially with 5G coming, there's 60 satellites a month going up into space. Elon Musk has a company called Starlink that's sending 5G satellites into the, into the earth or into the, the atmosphere. And there's going to be, I think it's 20,000 eventually, um, wow. blanketing the entire planet in 5G. Hmm. And this is happening over the next few years. So if you think that we have health problems now, wait until that, that starts continuing because people want to own the sky because yeah. then you own all the communications, you know, everything, everyone's saying over the cell phones, you own all the information. So there's like kind of this battle for the skies mm. uh, for a 5G communication and, and the implications that means for our, our freedom, you know, specifically, yeah. but it's more importantly for my focus is um, are the health effects. So people need to start thinking about this. A lot of the little meters that people have, yeah. the trifield meters, they aren't, uh, they aren't strong enough to detect the, like the 40 G and like the, the, the 40 gigahertz and things that are being emitted by these satellites are uh. not st sensitive enough. So they're not giving you the whole picture if you're kind of doing that. So there, I have a podcast I'm having on my, my site soon with Cyril Burke, who's mm. going to be talking about this and cool. he's, um, EMF mitigation expert. So there's lots, lots of stuff, uh, lots of education to be had around that topic. Lovely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is, it's such a, it's a growing concern and, you know, there's a lot of unknowns, but it is, I think that coupled with the metals, it's creating like we're a receiver and yes. it's just amplifying that signal even more. Yeah. The um, heavy metals attract the, the signals. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And conduct it. Right. So it's a biggie. Um, so in closing here, is there anything that you would like to leave our listeners of what the health here? Yes. Um, we've got a great base of listeners. They share the show. They're helping get the word out to their communities and their loved ones because they know like they're not getting this from the TV media. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, it's one of those things. I know this may have been a little depressing, um, <laughs> but certainly eye opening. But what I encourage people to think about is don't focus on the problem, focus on what you can do. There's lots in your control you can do to get this stuff out of your body, to reduce the influx of toxins in your body. There's lots of things uh, you can do around your home, changing products, um, you know, changing the foods that you're eating. It just takes a little bit of education, but Rome wasn't built in a day. You just have to focus on one thing at a time and kind of remediate one area, one room in your home at a time. And, you know, and I have lots a wealth of education on myearthdetox.com. Awesome. But if people are curious about their body burden of toxins, I created a quiz they can take at heavymetalsquiz.com. Take that uh, after a couple, you know, it takes a couple minutes and you get a free oh. video series that answers a lot of frequently asked questions about, you know, what, where do I start? What about uh, heavy metals testing? What kind of things can I do to, to start detoxing today? So it gives people kind of an idea of where to get started. Great. Thank yeah. you so much for that. And awesome information and really important. This is a piece, you know, uh, all of my patients go through a cleanse and detox annually. Um, I'm going to look in bringing yours into the clinic as well. And I really want folks, this is What the Health. I'm Dr. Greg Echo. This is Wendy Myers. Uh, if you're just tuning in now, go to naturecuresclinic.com backslash podcast and listen to this one because this is foundational work for you. Please share it with your friends and families. We're talking about raising our vitality and our terrain this is a this is foundational piece right here folks so please share it uh, if you like the show leave us some reviews we got to get those reviews out there uh, this is what the health Tuesdays from two to three Pacific Standard Time thank you for tuning in <laughs>